Right now, you're watching me take a spin around Brands Hatch in Assetto Corsa, trying my best not to turn it into a lawnmower. The graphics aren't flawless. Let's be real. This is a mid this is a mid-range PC we're talking about here. Or as some might say, a potato PC that's been mashed one too many times. Still, considering the setup, it's it's punching way above its weight, especially compared to most other spud-powered rigs. If you're curious how I managed to squeeze out these visuals without the help of a high-end rig, stick around, I'm about to spill the secrets. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel with me, Faye. Today I'm going to show you how I got Assetto Corsa running like a dream on my mid-range PC. If you've been battling low frame rates or choppy gameplay, no worries, I've got you covered. Ready to rev up your gaming experience? Let's dive in. Let me show you my graphics settings first. I've cranked everything up to maximum. World details, smoke generation, post-processing settings, all maxed out with heat shimmering, sun rays, and high quality mirrors activated. On a not so good day, these settings alone can really turn into an FPS killer. But as you saw earlier, that's not really the case here. Um, the game's still running smooth, even with everything cranked up. It's pretty awesome to get this kind of performance without having to dial anything back. All right, let me show you what I'm working with here. I've got an AMD Ryzen 5 3400G processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an AMD RX 570 eight gigabyte GPU. Not too shabby, but by today's standards and the demands of newer games for top tier visuals, I'd call this a solid mid-range build. My SSD is just 256 gigabytes and I'm keeping it pretty light with just Windows and some documents on there. All my games and other stuff are installed on my old hard drive, so I'm definitely making the most of the space I've got. Now head over to the CSP settings. In the general patch settings section, the physics experiments options can affect performance, but since I want to enhance my gameplay, I've enabled the ones I need, except for the ones that I felt really impacted my system's performance. Next up, under Optimizations, CPU Optimizations, and GPU Optimizations, I've done a bit of experimenting and landed on the settings you see on the screen. These tweaks struck the right balance for me, optimizing performance while still keeping the visuals looking great. On the left side, you'll notice a bunch of resource-heavy CSP settings are still active. We've got Extra FX going, Grass FX set to Medium, though it runs just fine on very high, and even real mirrors turned on, which can be a big drain on performance. Now, if you're wondering how I'm still managing to pull over 90 FPS, sometimes even hitting 100 FPS, with these FPS eating settings, the magic lies in the tweaks under graphics adjustments. These adjustments have really made all the difference, letting me enjoy crisp visuals without sacrificing smooth gameplay. It's really satisfying to see everything running so well. Before we dive into the graphics adjustments, let's first check out the extra FX section. I've got temporal anti-aliasing turned on. Some might say it makes the game a bit blurry and can cause a slight drop in frame rate, but in my experience, no matter how high I set the anti-aliasing in the graphics adjustments, I still notice pixelated edges, especially on fences and wires around the track. That's why I keep TAA active. It smooths out those rough edges and helps achieve the overall look I'm going for in the game. So you know how sometimes your games start lagging or just don't run as smoothly as you'd like, especially when you crank up the graphics settings? Well, AMD came up with this neat trick called Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR for short, that can help with that. Imagine you're playing a game on your PC, but your setup isn't exactly top of the line. Instead of having to lower your graphic settings and make the game look worse, FSR lets you keep those pretty visuals but boosts your frame rate. How? By getting a little clever with how the game is displayed on your screen. Here's what FSR does. Instead of making your graphics card work super hard to render every single detail at full resolution, it kind of takes a shortcut. It renders the game at a lower resolution first, like if you're playing in 4K, it might render it at 1440p instead. Then it uses some fancy algorithms to upscale that image back to 4K. So, you still get a sharp looking picture, but your PC doesn't have to work as hard, meaning you get smoother gameplay. It's like if you were baking a cake, but didn't have all the ingredients to make a full size one. 
Instead, you make a smaller cake, but then add some magic frosting that makes it look just as good as the big one. And that's basically what FSR is doing for your games, making them look good while using fewer resources. One of the best things about FSR is that it works on a bunch of different hardware. Whether you've got an AMD or an NVIDIA graphics card, or even if you're just using integrated graphics, FSR can give you a boost. Plus, it's super easy to use. A lot of games have it built in now, so you just flip a switch in the settings and you're good to go. FSR even gives you some options depending on what you care about more, image quality or performance. You can pick from modes like ultra quality, which keeps the visuals looking nearly pristine, or uh, performance, which really cranks up the frame rate but might make things a little fuzzier. So if you're finding that your games are struggling to keep up, especially when things get graphically intense, FSR is like a secret weapon in your settings menu that can give you that extra oomph without making your game look like a pixelated mess. Uh, it's, it's kind of a game changer, especially if you're not ready to drop big bucks on a new graphics card just yet. So, like I mentioned earlier, you can pick your graphic quality on the FSR scale, starting from the sad settings, which is like playing in a foggy dream, trust me, you don't want to go there, all the way up to very best quality. It's all about what your rig can handle. Just experiment with the settings and see how the visuals stack up against performance. And if you end up on sad settings, well, at least your PC is trying its best. On to the next bit. We've got the MSAA tweaks. Uh, I've turned on use custom MSAA resolve and applied it to the mirrors as well. This custom MSAA resolve lets you tweak how anti-aliasing smooths out those jagged edges in your game. It's kind of like adjusting the dial on how much smoothing you want, helping you find that sweet spot between killer visuals and smooth performance. And finally, the post-processing anti-aliasing, this is where the sharpness comes in. Remember the blurry look on the TAA setting? Uh, uh, other than the sharpness adjustments in the TAA Extra FX settings section, we can also make the overall look of the post-processing sharper while reducing GPU workload by enhancing it with FSR. And you can adjust the sharpness here in this particular settings. All these settings have been saved as a preset and you can grab them through the link in the description below. I've put together three different presets for you to try out so you can pick the one that works best for you. Since we've got the content manager open, it's time to put the pedal to the metal and see how these settings stack up. No sneaky cuts in this video. You're getting the full ride from settings to gameplay, unfiltered and uncensored. Let's see if these tweaks actually make a difference or if I'm just talking through my helmet. Time to pick a car for this test run. I've got a few options and out of the choices, the Honda Civic BTCC is really standing out. It looks like it's ready to tear up the track and show what it's got. I've been driving a lot of touring cars lately, like BTCC and TCR. They're super fun, but can be a handful, especially on narrow tracks, since just like in real life, these cars don't have traction control in the game either. So I've got the TC and ABS turned on to make things a bit easier. Let's roll with the Civic and see if it can handle these settings or if it'll just try to flee the scene. We're in the game now, and everything's looking pretty sweet under a sunny UK sky. Let's check out the real-time FPS. Pretty impressive for a potato PC, huh? I'll load up the setup real quick, and then it's just us, the car, and the track. Just a heads up, there might be a few frame drops now and then since I'm playing and recording at the same time. Cadwell Park, here we go. So yeah, I'm driving with a gamepad. Gamepad effects enabled in CSP, thanks to this brilliant mod called Advanced Gamepad Assist. You can snag it from Race Department, or as it's now known, Overtake.gg. Honestly, if you're using a gamepad instead of a wheel, this mod makes a world of difference. It fine-tunes everything, steering, braking, and accelerating, making it all way smoother and more responsive. It's like your gamepad suddenly thinks it's a top-tier racing wheel. And if you want to feel more in control without shelling out for a fancy wheel, this mod is definitely worth checking out.
All right, so here's the deal. I'm still a bit of a disaster behind the wheel, as you can see. No surprise there. I'm still not exactly a driving prodigy, but let's get back to the important stuff. Game performance. Oh, not my questionable racing skills. So back to business. One thing I definitely recommend is turning on the frame limiter in the graphic settings. But for the sake of this video, I've disabled it to see just how high the FPS can go with those CSP settings I showed you earlier. And sorry, um, it's like pushing the car to its limits just to see if it can handle it, even if I'm barely staying on the road. Let's see how much we can squeeze out of this setup. Oh, and about the weather effects and post-processing filters, I'm using the Pure Gamma high-res version with a tweaked GAF Aero PPF. It's a bit of an oldie, so I played around with the .lua script to fine-tune it and get the look I wanted. But honestly, there are tons of great pure PPFs out there, so feel free to pick one that catches your eye. Uh, you can find some awesome uh, free options over on the Overtake website. Visually, what you're seeing right now is in balanced mode with FSR. I usually roll with this mode or performance mode when I'm racing with more than 15 AI on the track. Keeps the action smooth without my PC feeling like it's trying to juggle too much. When I'm just doing solo practice or hot lapping against my ghost, my rig can handle quality or even ultra quality just fine. It's like giving it a bit of a warm up before diving back into the madness. It also holds up pretty well in rainy weather, handling those scattered reflections on wet tracks like a champ Though, there is a slight dip in frame rate. But hey, you can always tweak things by lowering the FSR or the post-processing anti-aliasing settings to keep your game cruising steady above 60 FPS. A little adjustment, and you're back in the game without missing a beat. And there you have it. That's how you can get smooth frame rate in Assetto Corsa without sacrificing those sweet visuals on a medium spec PC. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up. If you're up for more fun content like this, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've got thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, and if you'd like to support the channel even further, feel free to check out my Ko-fi page for some extra goodies and updates. Before we wrap up, here's a quick dad joke to keep the smiles going. Why did the race car driver go to jail? Because he couldn't stop breaking the track rules. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, keep racing and stay awesome. Or stay tuned and see just how many creative ways I can mess up a perfectly good lap. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. It's like watching a tutorial on what not to do behind the wheel.